Have you had your cup of coffee yet? We're going to talk about caffeine today. Okay, welcome to Talking with Docs and Dr. Brad Weenie. And I'm Dr. Paul Salsa. And we're going to start with a pop quiz. Okay. All right, we're going to give you six questions or I don't know, five yeah. or six questions about caffeine yep. that you got to answer. And we'll give you the answers at the end of this video after we teach you a little bit about caffeine. So pay attention. Yeah, pay and attention. stick around. While All right. sipping your coffee, maybe. Yeah, or maybe not after maybe. you hear this video. Depending on what time it is. Okay, caffeine. Yep. Question number one. How much caffeine is in an average eight ounce or 240 milliliter cup of brewed coffee? Okay, that's number one. Number two. Number two is which of the following drinks contains the least amount of caffeine per serving? Make a note of your answer. Number three. Number three is how long does it typically take for your body to eliminate half the caffeine you consume. The fancy term for this is what is the half-life of caffeine in your body? Okay, number four, true or false, caffeine is addictive in the same way that drugs like nicotine or cocaine are. You got a 50-50 chance to answer that's true there or you false. Go. Makes it easier for you, you're gonna get maybe one right. Okay, number five, which of the following is a potential benefit of moderate caffeine consumption? Okay. And the last the real The real take home question, why you all came here. Okay, so the last question, what is recommended to minimize caffeine induced sleep disruption based on new data? Okay, so there are six questions for you. Write down your answers and we're gonna grade them at the end of this okay. video. There you go. And leave right. them in the comments. Let us know how you did. Okay, and caffeine. So caffeine, what is it? So it's a, it's a compound of a group called xanthines. Uh -huh. And it is a stimulant. All right. It's a natural occurring stimulant. So it's naturally occurring. That means we find it in things like tea leaves, coffee beans, cocoa beans, yep. uh, different natural sources. And it's been used throughout history. For thousands, hundreds, thousands, thousands of years. Thousands yeah. of years people have used caffeine. Yep. So it's not something that was created in a lab. Right. And people figured it out and said, hey, when I take this, mm -hmm. it makes me feel... Makes you feel better. What are the what are the main kind of benefits? Or like, why do people enjoy consuming caffeine? Right. It because it reduces your sleepiness. First okay. of all, okay. It <clears throat> blocks uh, adenosine. Right. And adenosine is a substance in your brain that accumulates. Yes. Uh, throughout the day, which makes you feel sleepy. Right. And we've talked about this before. The main kind of the finest currency of energy in our body is ATP. And as this is broken down by thinking and living throughout the day. Adenosine, which is the, one of those basic components as the phosphates are taken off, slowly starts to accumulate. And then this molecule attaches to something called adenosine receptors, and this makes us feel drowsy. And it's all part of our circadian rhythm. And as this accumulates, it tells us, hey, the day is over, go to bed. Okay, and that might be why it increases alertness, right? Because you're not feeling so sleepy. It increases dopamine in the brain, it yep. increases norepinephrine. Yep. So these are other things that sort of make you feel good. Right, and the other effects would be to increase your heart rate and your blood pressure, because those are, are kind of fight or flight kind of molecules. Right, and now, um, in the average cup of coffee, yes, which is one of our questions on the it quiz, is. Is there crazy. is about 85 milligrams. Okay, depends I guess on how, how the grounds are done and all the rest of it, yeah. but there's some variability, but yeah. That's a ballpark. Like that. Okay, compared to a can of Coke. Yep. Coca-Cola or Pepsi, which has about, what is it, 35, 45? Don't pretend like you don't know. Do you still drink your Coke? Yeah. You reduced it though, right? I, I just thought, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all jittery on weekends. <laughs> yeah. And tea, tea is kind of somewhere between those two. Again, really depends on how long you leave the tea bag in, because that's okay. the, the longer that it steeps would increase the caffeine consumption. And then I'd say the big change that's in the last 10 years are in things like energy drinks and free yes. workout, where the amounts of caffeine are like three, four, five high. times what a cup of coffee is. Right, energy drinks can be quite high. Yep. Uh, your standard energy drink, I think, is comparable to, you know, not quite as much as a cup of coffee, but those pre-workouts can have a ton of it. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, the average Canadian drinks about 2.7 cups of coffee okay. a day. The average American, about three cups of coffee per day. Okay. And it varies geographically around the world right. uh, to how much coffee people drink. So, so is, is caffeine addictive? That's a good Because a lot of people are like, I need my coffee. Yeah. I need my coffee. I need a lot coffee. of people say, I'm addicted to coffee. I'm addicted to coffee. I'm addicted to caffeine. Strictly speaking, by the DSM criteria, which is this manual that psychiatrists use and psychologists use for for diagnosing different mental conditions, yep. um, it's not. It doesn't fall under the criteria, the strict criteria for addiction. Right, but it's a little bit nuanced because mm -hmm. caffeine definitely can lead to tolerance, so you need yeah. more caffeine to get the same benefits. So that's yeah. a characteristic of things that are addictive. Yeah. And also if you stop taking them, you experience physical or psychological withdrawal symptoms. Right. 
and that also occurs with caffeine. So yeah. it's interesting. I think it's yeah. gone to the area of investigation. It is. They want to investigate more, but it doesn't have that super positive reinforcement that you get from that right. euphoric feeling of using addictive substances, right? Like alcohol or opiates. Well, that's the thing about, about how it works too, is that it, it blocks the adenosine receptor, so it doesn't actually make you rested. It just makes you less drowsy in the moment. Right. Okay. Eventually, you're going to have to pay. You're going to have to go to sleep at some point. At some point. And okay. the other thing we discussed was the half-life. So half-life is a measure that we use in medicine, in chemistry, in yep. biology. Of radioactivity. How, radioactivity, for example, yeah. Half-life is how long uh, does it take, in, in a biologic sense, how long does it take for your body to clear out half of the dose of whatever you just took? Right. So the longer the half-life, the longer that that substance hangs around your body. So if something has a long half-life, like an antibiotic or something like that, then your dosing is very infrequent. You might have to take it once a day or twice a day. If yeah. something has a very short half-life, then you might be taking that thing three or four times a day. Right. So caffeine, its half-life is around three to five hours. Okay, and three to five hours, so if you took in 100 milligrams, three to five hours later, you'd have 50 milligrams left. Which is interesting that it's not more specific, but it, it relates to so many different things like right. hydration status, kidney function, all that kind of stuff. Yes. I think you'd be able to hammer it down a little tighter. You but. would, but it speaks to the variability in all biologic yeah. systems because everyone metabolizes things at a slightly different rate. Yeah. And there can be certain other drugs or other things or other aspects of you that make the half-life go up to even like 10 hours or something right. like that. So when we talk about really how long before you sleep, should you stop taking caffeine? Yeah, so so often people are talking about two to three times the half-life, right? Because yeah. then that, so imagine if you say you have 100 milligrams of caffeine, you know, the first five hours or three to five hours, it goes down to 50. It's pretty good. Not bad. But then the next five hours, it only goes to 25. Mm, like you gotta get diminishing so returns and then to 12.5. So three half-lives gets rid of 87.5% of your, yeah. of your caffeine. So. The nitpicky math people will say, well, so you never get rid of it completely. That's true. It's, it's, kind of, it's an asymptotic kind of thing. Zero, right. Yeah. Right. You do, in effect. Uh, so really, the, the latest data says that you should not consume more than 400 milligrams 12 hours before you go to sleep. Right. So depending what time you go to sleep, essentially, as soon as you get up, you should stop taking caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be able to sleep that night. Right. So I don't think many people follow that. But if you do have problems sleeping, that might be something you can try. Say, okay, I'm going to give myself 12 hours to clear this drug yeah. out of my system before I try and go to sleep. And interesting that you said 400 milligrams, because that's about the recommended daily dose. They say yeah. that's about where we should target even a little bit Safely, lower. Right? And if the average person's having about three cups of coffee, two to seven to three cups of coffee, that comes out to about 400. And we've talked about this before. Some are like, you know, caffeine doesn't affect me. You know what? I can go to sleep right after. So just so that you know, you may be able to fall asleep, but there are good scientific studies that show that when you do go to sleep, if you've had a cup of coffee in bed, that you actually have reduced deep sleep and reduced REM sleep. So your quality of sleep is actually quite poor. It's similar to alcohol that way. Yes. A lot of people are like, oh, when I have a drink, I get so tired and then I sleep. fall asleep. Yeah. Yes, you go to sleep, but you don't get restful sleep, sleep, which is really what our, we're trying to get to. Plus some people do develop a tolerance to it too. Absolutely. Before we go any further, anyone that should not have caffeine, like wow. we talk about, oh, it might be a drug or it's drug-like, that usually means there's a population that maybe should be careful or talk to their doctor or avoid it altogether. Absolutely. Are there people that live in that group? Yes. Okay, who? If you have some sort of arrhythmia, so that means there's something wrong or something off about the rhythm of your heart. Yep. Okay, and arrhythmia, caffeine can make that worse. Sure. If you have high blood pressure, hypertension, yep. many of you do, Caffeine can make that worse. Yep. If you're pregnant, it's recommended to be avoided. It doesn't make that worse. It's just your son's no, supposed to have it. No, that's true. Yeah, and I think it's really variable about kids. I'd say most um, scientific or medical bodies would say that kids probably should not be consuming a large yeah. amount of caffeine. Um, and this is unfortunately is a real problem in our society Which nowadays. is why the energy drinks and, sh and soda pops uh, yeah. are targeted at children. Yeah. Um, I see kids with coffee even now, like like yeah. young kids. Like it's going weird. To, yeah, it is weird. Um, and, oh, and the other cool thing about that, on that okay. note, is chocolate. Yes, who knew? What kid doesn't eat chocolate? I know, and there's caffeine there. And there's caffeine, so not a ton. In milk chocolate, it's not that high, maybe 7, 15 milligrams or something like that. But once you get into the dark chocolates and the high percentage dark chocolates, yep. 
you can be competing with almost coffee yes. with the amount of chocolate in a chocolate bar. Like the chocolate-covered chocolate coffee beans that Ooh. sometimes students used to use. Well, this, this is, I remember when I was in engineering, yeah. before like an exam, I would have some like a Coke and some chocolate. Right. To, especially if I was up late studying the night before. Well, so I think that's a, that's a good segue into, like what are some of the side effects of people that maybe have consumed too much caffeine or are naive and have had a normal amount of caffeine? Mm. Some of the side effects. Did you ever experience So yes. think back yeah. to late in the night when you've studied really hard, yeah. which seems like a bad idea actually, because it's not, it doesn't make you rested for the exam. It actually yeah. does not make you rested, yeah. but allows you to cover some material. Yeah. So how did you feel? Jittery. Yes. Yeah, you're all over the place. Often I, mean, I had a sore stomach as well because it had some GI yeah. stuff. Yeah. Often your your stomach is churning, you felt jittery, you actually had some anxiety and this can aggravate sure. some of these kinds of things. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of exams and okay. studying tests, answers to the quiz. Okay. Actually, I think we didn't cover one, which is one. Did we talk about physical performance and uh, oh, academic performance? Yes. Uh, no, we did not actually discuss that. I think it's worth talking about. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, well, listen, before a hockey game or whatever, I'm going to chug an energy drink and have a cup of coffee. There is some evidence to show that it can mobilize fat stores, yeah. that you can have increased fat oxidation. So there's more benefit for endurance type activities rather than short term activities. Mm -hmm. And then for academic performance in the short term, it can improve focus in yeah. short term memory, but probably does not lead to necessarily long term retention, which at the end of the day, unless you're having a coffee, maybe right before your exam and then cramming, then maybe that theoretically yeah. could help, but it's probably not going to form yeah. longer memories. Kids, if you are studying, the way you make those longer <laughs> memories, it's spaced repetition. Yeah. Or, or look be, at something, yeah. wait a bit, sleep on it, look at it again. Spaced, wait for it. And my recommendation repetition. would be go back in time, go to class, mm. do the assignments on the assigned schedule, yeah. and don't cram and get a good night's sleep before the exam, which I never did, but some of the, the more successful students never had, did. Never crammed or never I always crammed. I, okay. no, no, I went to class, but I was like last minute yeah. Larry a little bit. Yeah. But the other last kids, you're like, oh, I'm going to bed early. And you're like, why are you going to bed early yeah. the night before the exam? And you're like, how can you go to bed? I have so much to do yet. And then I'd be studying, like right before the exam, I'm like, how did I not know this already? Yeah. Like, why am I learning this, yeah. not reviewing it? You were last minute Larry, yeah. last row Logan. <laughs> last. No, I, I kind of moved around. And, did you? Yeah. You? Uh, back. Back. <laughs> back. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's go, let's go over the answers now to the questions. Okay. Make a note in the comments. Of See how, how you, you did. did. And leave a comment to how well or how not well. Poorly, I guess, is the other word. There you you go. did for this. Sure. Okay, you ready? Number one was how much caffeine is in an average 8-ounce cup of brewed coffee? Okay. The answer is 95 milligrams. Okay. Uh, just FYI, coffee's got 95. Typical energy drink, energy drink is 80. Black tea is about... 47 milligrams, Coca-Cola's around 34 milligrams. Yeah. And safety-wise, most people say, hey, a cup or two of coffee a day, up to three or four, and then beyond that, you're probably potentially running into problems. Okay. Number two, uh, which of the following drinks contains the least amount of caffeine per standard serving? Okay, so the answer is Coca-Cola, 34 milligrams of caffeine. There you go, see? Yeah. I never drink coffee. Yeah, I, you've never had a cup of coffee, right? No. Ever in your never life? Never had a full cup of coffee. Leave a comment if you think that's weird. Never the Dr. Zalzal has never in his entire life had never. a cup of coffee. I, I think never, that's, that's I've wild. I've never had a cup of coffee. I, I, as you know, I drink Coke some yep. on the weekends. Yes. And sometimes during the week, yep. usually. Um, but yeah, never had coffee. Yeah, interesting. I'd go nuts if I had a cup of coffee. You would look out. Okay. Me no, either. I don't drink coffee. Yeah, no, I just, right. I have one you cup drink. of coffee in the morning, that's it. Before my before your second cup? Oh um, no, actually no, no I don't. No, you like cup. to have your first cup before your second cup. No. And you like to have your second cup before your third cup. I don't, I just have one cup. Really? On my drive to work. That's really? it. You really maximize the effects of caffeine. <laughs> my body responds. <laughs> your half life is twelve hours. Okay, three. How long does it typically take for your body to eliminate half of the caffeine you consume? The half life of caffeine is about three to five hours. Okay. We mentioned that. Yeah, you did a nice description of that. Okay, true or false, caffeine is addictive in the same way that drugs like nicotine and cocaine are. That is false. We told you, as per the DSM criteria, it doesn't really fit the definition of But it's kind addiction. of addictive. That's a gray area. Yeah, yeah it's gray. Okay, which of the following is a potential benefit of moderate caffeine consumption? Improved alertness and concentration. Okay. Okay, last question. What is recommended to minimize caffeine-induced sleep disruption based on the new data? And the answer is avoiding consumption of 400 milligrams of caffeine within 12 hours of bedtime. There you go. Wake up, have your coffee, and don't touch it again. One other side note. 
personally, as a middle-aged man, is I find mm. the effects of caffeine, yes. and I know you know where I'm going with yeah, this. Yeah, I know. It's a diuretic. Yeah. So not only you're consuming with liquid, but it also increases the excretion of liquids by increasing yeah. salt, um, salt losses uh, through your urine. Yeah. So as a middle-aged man, you have to plan a little bit more about when you're going to consume your beverages. So not maybe 12 hours before bed, but I don't drink a lot right before bed. No. Because I don't yeah. want to get up in the middle of the night and have to go to the bathroom. Right, now you can't sleep because of caffeine, you can't sleep because you gotta go pee. Yeah, it's too much. It's a lot. Now you know all about caffeine. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, share it with someone that you know maybe drinks too much caffeine late at night. Let us know how you use caffeine in your life. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.